Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the Newbrick Workshop. We're continuing the assembly of the 750mm X-Carve uh, and we've got to the stage now where we're assembling the X-Controller. Now, if you look at the Inventables instructions uh, for the X-Controller, they are not Inventables' best job, I'm afraid. Uh, slightly ambiguous here and there. And in the past, when we've had components, we've had a description and a part number uh, written on the packet. Now we're getting uh, lots of components with no part number, uh, no description. I'm hitting a snag straight away because I'm told to look for some power supply Phillips screws. Well, mm, if there's only one type of Phillips screw, that's fine. So it's not going to be quite as easy uh, as we've been used to, but we'll get there, I promise. Now the very first thing to do, and this is really, really important, uh, before you start, look at your power supply main unit. And it's this shiny metal thing. And there's a little window here. And in one direction, uh, it's expecting the power supply to be 115 volts. In the other direction, 230. Mine has come with it set in 115. I live in a country where we have 230. So I'm going to flip that into the 230 position. Now, depending which country you're in, you need to make sure that this is set in the correct place for your power supply. The next stage is to flip up this plastic uh, cover which is over these screws on the power supply. And the trick is, is to lift from both ends and lift it up and it comes up. Uh, you need to get hold of this bit which is the power supply interface printed circuit board. So I've taken five screws out that correspond with those five connectors. Uh, the screws are there. I'm now gonna push this in I'm going to put one screw in straight away just to support it all. And once you get the last one in, just go, go along and give them a little tweak to make sure they're properly tight. And you can let that little cover now go back down. Now, the next stage is to mount the uh, power supply uh, unit into the uh, main chassis. And it says in the instructions that the uh, holes in here are not symmetrical. Uh, they're... Uh, probably about five centimetres from this end here, and the ones at this end are probably about eight centimetres. And you now need to look at the holes that are going to be utilised uh, on the uh, main power supply unit. And what you're being told to do is to make sure that when this is installed, that this is flush at the end here. And once you've started one screw, it's then relatively easy to get the others in place. And that's what it should look like uh, when it's done. Now do note that if you've forgotten to check that power supply, whether it's 115 or 230, uh, then it's too late to do anything about it now. Now you now need to check the controller board and there are some uh, little uh, dip switches here, here and here, uh, and some little uh, micro uh, potentiometers here, here, and here. And you need to make sure those are all in the correct position. Uh, there is a diagram, it's easy to follow. I've checked mine and mine arrived correctly set up. We now have to attach this cable like so. And we're going to take one of the ribbon cables and it's going to go between here and here. Now you need to note that on the back here there is a notch and there's a notch on that side of this black uh, uh, receiver and the, there's a notch on the right side of this receiver. So I'm going to put this one in first, push this in. Once you're happy you can bring those retainers back in. And we're going to do the same here. Open the retainers, put this in the correct way around. With all of these things you do need to make sure that you're not forcing any of these pins. And once that's in and the clips are closed, that's that bit done. We're now going to slide this board in. There's a little bit of a channel here and here for it to slide into. And these cables are going to have to pass through this little uh, rectangular hole here. And you just need to help it along a bit. Now, the picture for this in the instructions uh, is uh, a mirror image of what I have in front of me. Um, in the instructions, if I have this uh, piece on the left, then this should be in front of me, but it's not. So anyway, uh, I shall persevere. I'm going to pull this. Next, we have to unscrew this black nut here. 
Um, I'll take it all the way off. Right, the next stage is to insert this uh, button uh, through the panel. Now, I don't know that it makes any difference which side it goes, but when you look at the panel with this top left, it's going to go in from behind. Now, it then says there's a marking that says top, and it's written in very, very uh, difficult to read letters, uh, just about here. And it's got to be facing the centre of the panel. Do they mean the centre here? Or do they mean the centre there? It's ambiguous, I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to put this nut on, and that will be possible to rotate uh, if I've got it wrong. So I've got it facing, uh, with the top facing down this way. But the cent centre of the panel could be this centre. I just don't know. I've looked carefully at one of the pictures on the Inventable website, and the word top, which is written just there, I think should be facing this way. Next, we've removed the uh, little... Uh, screws from the USB cable. We've taken this piece and we're going to screw the USB uh, cable into position and then screw those up. And that's that nice and tight. Next we're going to take this button PCB and fit these nylon standoffs. There's a, a, a piece that stands up like that and on the other end there's a little nut and they're made of white plastic. Now whatever you do if you're doing this in your workshop, don't drop any of these bits on the floor because you might never find them. Now, you'll see here a little green LED. Uh, when I came to uh, do a test fitting, that wasn't quite in the right position for me, so I had to just push it very, very gently. But um, be careful if you do have to do that. And now you can see how this is going to look. And the standoffs are at the back there doing their job. And now we're going to use some of these little dinky little black screws to hold this in position. Now be very careful with these screws because they're going into plastic and it's very easy to cross thread them. And don't over tighten them because you'll just strip the threads in the plastic. There we go. Right, we're now going to take uh, one of these ribbon cables and it's going to go uh, between this receiver which is just here and the other receiver which is just here and I'm opening out those retaining gizmos. I'm going to put this one in first because it might be slightly easier as that goes in so the little retaining levers close in behind it so I'm happy with that one. Get this orientation right here and again as I press down so those retainers come in and that's that's there. Now, you remember we put the button on here. We're now going to attach uh, these red terminals, one through here and one through there. Need to loosen off the screws in here first and then put the cables in. And it says in the instructions it doesn't matter which way round they go. Uh, now, I assume this is going to go in uh, that way. So I would suggest that the shorter of these two cables goes to the one which is on this side. There goes the longer one on the other side. And once I knew the correct orientation, I've now taken that off uh, because otherwise we won't be able to slide this into position. Now I've attached uh, the other end of the USB cable to here. I'm now sliding this in part way. I'm now going to very carefully turn this up because the, the next thing to do is to reattach this. I'm pretty sure it's in place, as it should be. And next we're going to attach the front panel using these cap screws. Now I'm not quite sure why they're using cap screws for this and not the dome-headed ones, but, well, who am I to judge? Oops. So that's what we look like so far. Our next job is to install this fan, uh, and it has uh, a pair of wires coming down from it. Uh, those will go at the bottom uh, and there's this little cover that goes over here and in the packet that came with the fan some screws which will go through here like so plus some nuts. That's that. Now we have to get this wire connected. Now the connector is just here 
and on the end of this uh, cable uh, there is a roving socket and has a little indent in the front of it which goes at the front and you just push it down onto that post and that's the job done. And then we can now position this like so and now we can put the screws in to attach the front plate. Now I had assembled this uh, but I noticed that when I was pushing the cables into this uh, top uh, main circuit board here it was kept on moving back and I've then taken it apart and had a look and there are places for some stop screws uh, to go in to stop it from moving all the way back. So I found a pair of uh, dome headed screws uh, which fit the holes and I've put them in place. I'm just going to tighten them up so they don't accidentally fall out. And now I'll put things back as they should be. So uh, before you close everything up make sure you've got those two screws in, one there and one on the other side and that stops that main circuit board going back too far. Right, wiring up these uh, terminal blocks is pretty straightforward. Uh, just uh, take your time and make sure you get the colours in the right order and then the rest is very, very easy. Now the ones to really watch are the two Y cables. They're, they're numbered Y1 and Y2. Make sure that the one that's labelled Y2 goes to Y2 because otherwise uh, you, you might have one motor going in one direction, one in the other. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but uh, whatever it is, uh, just make sure you get the, the Ys around the, the right way. Always check what's on the label, Y1, Y1. I'm doing Y1. Now when you're wiring up the limit switches, there are two blocks. One's got eight connections, the other's got seven. Don't do what I just did. Start putting the limit switches on the one with seven, because that's wrong. You need to put the limit switches on the ones with eight. Uh, of course, one only notices that sort of thing towards the very end. So that was a bit of a disappointment. That's X. Next one is Y. Y limit. Right, so those are done. Um, I've got a little bit of a cable tidying issue here, um, but I don't think it's a major problem. Just put that into place. The main thing is to ensure that there's nothing here which is going to interfere with any of the moving parts. That seems to be all right. So we're all ready for connecting it to the computer and getting it going. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.